Hey what's up guys, my name is Alex and welcome to my series called Switching to Ubuntu GNOME whereby I am effectively inviting anybody who wants to to look over my shoulder whilst I take a clean installation of Ubuntu GNOME 15.04 and configure it exactly the way that I like in order to be productive. Before I go any further, I just want to make it known that this series, both the title and the general idea was inspired by a YouTube channel called Infinitely Galactic. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is, is take the existing software, for instance Firefox and LibreOffice, and update those to the latest version. Because between the time that the ISO was created a few months ago and today, there have been updates made to the already installed software, and security patches and stuff like that have been applied also. So to install the latest software, I'm going to open the terminal and I'm going to run sudo apt-get update. Now, whilst update might sound like it's going to update your packages, it doesn't. It's a little bit confusing. What update does when you run it, and let me just use the Y flag, by the way, so that when it asks me to say yes or no, it will automatically say yes. What update does is it downloads and updates your local package index. In a nutshell, Ubuntu maintains this file that has a list of all of the available packages and their latest version numbers. Whenever you add a new repository or a new PPA, and we'll talk more about those things in a bit, you need to run the update command because that will basically download the latest and updated list of those packages and the latest version numbers. And it is because that we run update that now when we run sudo apt-get dist upgrade, that the command dist upgrade will know that there are new versions out. It will take the current version number and it will compare it to the versions in that file that you just synchronized. I'll run yes. And I'm going to let that run and then resume the recording because I don't really want to install software whilst this is running as not to cause any conflicts. Okay, now that all of our local packages have been updated, I'm going to install Google Chrome. Now, to do this, it's really easy. I type sudo apt-get install chromium browser and by the way i called it google chrome but there is a difference between chrome and chromium although it's not much of a difference okay so now chrome is installing whilst chrome is installing i'm going to open a new tab in the terminal by pressing Control, shift and t and as you can see the previous uh, operation is still running in this terminal but now we have a new terminal where we can execute commands independently now I want to install Skype, so let me try this. I'm going to say sudo apt-get install Skype, put in my password, and it says unable to locate package Skype. Okay, if we press the start button or the super key, if you're on a different keyboard layout, and go to the software and updates application, and click on the other software tab, you can see that here I have a PPA for my screen recorder, and we'll talk more about PPAs in a bit, but we also have the option to enable a repository called Canonical Partners. So by default, when you install Ubuntu, you have this repository maintained by Canonical, and that is where Chromium is. That is where Firefox and all the default applications are. When you run the update command, it's using that repository. However, Canonical have this optional repository that you can enable called Canonical Partners, this software is generally closed source, often proprietary, that Canonical cannot verify. However, they package it on behalf of their partners. One such partner of Canonical is Microsoft, and therefore, when I enable this repository and press close, I will be able to install Skype. It tells me here that the information about available software is out of date. What that means is it's saying you just updated a repository, but you haven't run apt-get update. You haven't downloaded the latest list of, pro of packages available, including the ones in that repository you just added. So we can press reload and that will effectively run apt-get updates, I believe. But just to demonstrate this, if I close this and I try and install Skype again, it says Skype can't be found. But when I run sudo, apt get update and when this finishes when I install Skype it should tell me that Skype is found and ask me if I want to install it so I press the up key so let me just show you that real quick if you press the up key it will take you to your previous command so I'm pressing up up to see the Skype command that failed previously I run this and as you can see it now says hey I found Skype it was in that canonical partners repository you want me to install it I need this much disk space so I say yes I do want you to install it and there we go that's going to install Another piece of software I want to install is Sublime Text. So I'm going to run sudo apt-get install Sublime Text. 
install it and put in my password and it says it can't find um, that seems to suggest that I didn't run it as sudo but I did let me try that again oh maybe that's because there's a conflict with the already running installer We'll come to that again in a second because basically if I if that did succeed, you would see that Sublime Text can't be found. That is because Sublime Text has got nothing to do with Canonical. It's not a partner, it's not on the official repository and therefore when you use apt-get, Ubuntu is not going to find it. That is why there are these things called personal package archives or PPAs. In a nutshell, you can add a PPA for Sublime Text or for a different third party piece of software and then subsequently install Sublime Text. So I just so happen to know that, and I've opened it in advance, that there is a PPA for Sublime Text. As you can see, if you go to launchpad.net, you can see various PPAs. This company, I believe, called Web UPD8, have maintained a Sublime Text free installer. And all you have to do is, is you have to add this PPA right here. As you can see, I'm going to copy it, switch back to the terminal. I'm going to run sudo add apt repository and I'm going to specify the name of the PPA and it's going to ask me to confirm because PPAs have the potential to be dangerous. It just so happens that the PPA that I'm using here is fairly well known, it's frequently updated, it's got a lot of downloads, it's with a reliable company who has a face, and so I trust it. I'm going to press enter, and this itself won't install the software, it simply adds the repository. So when I run sudo apt-get updates, it will now download the list of packages available in this PPA, as well as their version numbers and descriptions. Now when I run Sublime Text Installer, there we go, it's going to install Sublime. And now if I just go to the activity window and I search for Skype, it's there. I search for Sublime Text, it should be there. And Sublime Text is there. So yeah, please keep your best words about you when you're using a PPA because like I say, they have the potential to be malicious. Generally, if it's with a company with a face like WebUPD or you find it in a highly acclaimed Stack Overflow answer or a highly, if it's endorsed by a highly acclaimed blogger, it's probably going to be safe. But if you're deep into Google on page 10 and you find this kind of sketchy looking PPA, do some research before you install it. The next thing I want to install, because I sync all my files to the cloud, so I use and I use Dropbox for that. So before I really go much further, I want to be able to access my files because I have wallpapers and stuff like that I like in there. I'm going to install Dropbox. So again, I've got this open in a tab and I'm going to drag it in. And whilst I've used the terminal in the past, I'm going to use a GUI or a graphical user interface to do this because I want to demonstrate the different ways of installing software. There probably is a PPA for Dropbox out there. I don't doubt that there is. However, I just use the option that is the easiest. Sometimes it's adding a PPA, sometimes it's downloading a Debian file or a .deb file, which I believe is because Ubuntu is predicated on Debian, but don't quote me on that. And I want the 64-bit version. And the really cool thing I want to show you is that when you save a .deb file and you open it, it opens in the Ubuntu Software Center. So the Ubuntu Software Center is comparable to like an App Store or the Google Play Store, and you can install a bunch of free and proprietary software. However, when you just download a local DEB and open it, you can install it based on that local file. So this is not really communicating with the internet, and it's even warning us only install this file if you trust its origin. If you were to just browse it via the official endorsed packages, you wouldn't see that warning. But watch this, I'll install it. And it's probably going to prompt me for my password. Yeah, I don't I, I don't like this tool very much at all because I know it needs my permission to do it with my password, but sometimes it doesn't prompt me. So if it doesn't work this time, I will just do it off screen. Alas, it worked. And I'll type in my password and this will install. It's a fairly hefty installer. In fact, the installation itself is quite short, but once you run Dropbox, you have to follow an installer. So I'm not going to do that on screen. I'll do that later. Um, but yeah, that's some basically my staple software. I'll install more software as we move on. I'm not going to anticipate everything I'm ever going to need because that's just not how I operate, but I'm pretty happy with what we've got right here. Now I'm going to install a graphics card driver. To do that, I go to the activities window um, or overview, and I'm going to search for software and updates. We've been here before. And I click on the additional drivers tab. And after a few seconds, it's going to load and show me, hopefully, that I have an available proprietary driver, as you can see. 
by default it's using an open source driver which is good if you want to support open source software and I, and I do enjoy supporting open source software when I can but I think having a proprietary driver is actually quite important and I'm going to choose the one that looks the most correct and for me that's going to be the one at the top that says it's proprietary tested and with the highest version number and then when you click on that radio button you want to click on apply changes and I believe this is going to commence the download which is quite substantial I think. In my case I believe it's something like 400 megabytes of course it's not going to tell me but you can install this via the terminal and I've done that in the past and I know it's fairly sizable so I'm not going to make you watch this progress bar climb but after it's installed I'm going to click I think apply changes and then restart my computer because you need to restart your computer for the driver to take effect. Alright, so I've installed the latest NVIDIA driver for my card, restarted my computer, and now I've booted back in and started my screen recorder. You've missed nothing. When I said previously that it would be like a button called apply, it actually said restart. Of course, I could have just gone to the power button here and restarted my computer that way. But either way, I restarted my computer. So the next thing I want to talk about is GNOME Shell. Now, if I go to the terminal, and I'm going to do that by pressing and holding Control, Alt, and then T, because that is a shortcut for opening the terminal, and I type in GNOME Shell hyphen hyphen version, you can see that we are using GNOME Shell 3.14.4. That is not the latest version of GNOME Shell. The latest version, I believe, is 3.16.2. However, there was a mismatch in the release cycle, and therefore, well, well let me put it this way. When the ISO for Ubuntu 15.04 was created a few months ago, version 3.16.2 was not stable yet, and therefore they weren't shipped together. Ubuntu GNOME were not going to just wait and delay their release for this to be ready. They're, de they're maintained independently, because remember, we're talking about Ubuntu here, which is kind of your core operating system, and then you have the desktop environment that sits on Ubuntu. Ubuntu comes in many different flavors. There is the Unity desktop environment, and there's the GNOME desktop environment, and they're maintained separately because GNOME isn't limited to Ubuntu. You can run Arch Linux and run GNOME. You can run Fedora and run GNOME. In fact, I think Fedora 22 comes shipped with GNOME 3.16.2 because their release cycles did match, which is cool. However, I want to use Ubuntu. So yeah, I'm going to attempt to upgrade to version 3.16.2. It is possible, although I want to just say this right away, it's incredibly temperamental. I did this in the past when I was playing around with GNOME and it worked perfectly. I'd seen loads of people saying, oh no, it doesn't work for me. And I was like, oh, thank my lucky stars, it works so smoothly for me. However, yesterday I tried to record this video and I was getting ready to implore everybody to install it because it has so many great improvements. And then I was like, okay, let me do this. I recorded myself installing it and basically it ended up in me having to reinstall uh, my operating system. So yeah, the things I don't like about GNOME 3.14 is firstly, there's this quite ugly icon in the top left here. It doesn't appeal to me at all and I'm shallow like that. Similarly, if you look here, it's got this kind of illuminated blue that's quite old fashioned in my view. Um, the other thing that I, a real, you know, they're just minor aesthetic things. The things I really don't like is if you open Dropbox, for instance, um, and you want to see the tray icon, because often with Dropbox or Skype, you want to see the tray icon. Well, there are no tray icons in the top right. The way you view the tray icons is by slamming your cursor into the bottom of the screen and having this notification panel open up. Similarly, this is where notifications go, I think, when you get Skype alerts and stuff like that. And yeah, it's not nice because, well, firstly, these icons are too wide. As you can see, that icon is offset. I don't like having to move my cursor this Look and look at this, I'm trying to do it again, but it's not working. It's really quite irritating to me. Fortunately, GNOME, uh, GNOME 3.16.2 has a plethora of improvements that somehow bring GNOME into the present day and age, and I love it a lot. So let me try and install this, and we'll see what happens. What you want to do, basically, is, again, I'm going to copy these commands off of my other screen because I don't remember them offhand. I'm going to run sudo and I'm going to add a repository called GNOME Free Staging. This is where GNOME store their, uh, basically their kind of like beta packages, things that are not quite ready to be shipped. Next, what I'm going to do after adding that repository, or that PPA, sorry, is I'm going to run sudo apt get update. You know what this does now. And then I'm going to simply run sudo dist upgrade, right? So sudo apt get dist upgrade. 
Now, you'll have seen earlier that I ran dist upgrade and I'm running dist upgrade again here rather than upgrade because the difference between upgrade and dist upgrade is that upgrade will only replace existing packages as where dist upgrade will include new packages that are maybe dependencies or newly added packages. And they'll also remove no longer needed packages. It's just generally a more powerful command which is great when you've got a clean installation like this, but if you're running a server or you want to keep your system super stable, then you want to be wary about running dist upgrade everywhere. But because I've got nothing on my system, it's not a big deal. So as you can see, despite running dist upgrade earlier in this video, but because I added a new repository and I ran, or new PPA, sorry, and I ran the update command, Ubuntu is now saying, oh, look, there's some new packages that need upgrading. Namely, a bunch of dependencies, I believe, of GNOME, as well as, as you can see, a bunch of these GNOME packages need upgrading from whatever version they are to the ones that work with the shell version 3.16.2. Anyway, I'm going to press Y and I'm going to let this run. It's not going to take effect immediately. All this is doing is downloading and replacing and updating your packages. Once this is finished, I'm going to restart my computer and with any luck at all, I'll actually get into my desktop. Wow, it actually worked. I have installed GNOME Shell version 3.16. If I go to the terminal, I type in GNOME Shell version. I'm now running 3.16.2. The differences should be quite obvious. For instance, this terminal looks generally different. The menu is a little bit more aesthetic. Uh, the harsh kind of illuminated blue I complained about before is now this flat, subtle blue. I showed you the shutdown button modal earlier. That's flat, now quite appealing compared to the out-of-date gradient. Um, similarly, there is no notification tray at the bottom that was really unpopular, so they ditched it. The tray icons are in the bottom left now that you can kind of bring in and out. I like it a lot because I rarely need to use these tray icons. And when I do, I can make it visible. When I don't need them, it shows this very thin bar that I thought would be an issue, but really I don't notice it. The notifications now are in this menu. Um, on newer systems, I think you can also get world clocks in this window. Uh, similarly, the icon that was really ugly before is now much smaller and subtle. I like that a lot. Um, in general, the theme has kind of changed a bit. I think you'll notice some differences around here. For example, this input field is flat and stuff like that. So yeah, it's really nice and I like this installation a lot. Frankly, if it wasn't for GNOME 3.16, I would not be using GNOME. I really dislike GNOME 3.14 personally, although I appreciate that a lot of people like it. Of course, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Anyway, thank you for watching guys. I think I'm going to conclude this video here because even though I haven't installed a lot of software, I've installed my staples. Sublime is great for editing configuration files and I've got Dropbox for my files and all that good stuff. In the next video, I'm going to focus on improving the aesthetics of my desktop environment using the GNOME Tweak tool and custom themes and icons and stuff like that. Thanks again for watching.